Y'all, what's good, my boys? Look, man, today is another day, man. We're chilling live right now over on Twitch, my boys. So, look, look, I just want to say real quick, before we get started, before we get to the SpongeBob conspiracy, man, the family wanted to say what's good, man. You see the stuff, you too happy you... Y'all should be over here with your boy, man. I don't know what y'all doing. Now, last time, we saw some crazy shit with Sandy, all right? Now, Sandy was being a little bitch. You know, I, I know, I know it's... Cartoon and Tip Sandy with some girl. That's, that's our girl, but she was being a bitch, okay? But look, today we're getting ready to check out Mrs. Puff, okay? You know what I'm saying? Mrs. Puff. So I need y'all to do me a favor, man. Hit the like button. Go down below. Subscribe to your boy, man. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all come and make sure y'all check out the Twitch, man. The link is going to be in the description. We stream every every Monday night at 7 p.m. Every Wednesday night over on YouTube, man. So don't miss the fuck out, boy. The original Hero Hoodie Classic by Quick Flip. Medium weight, French terry fabric, custom... No, boy, y'all man. This is not Mrs. Puff. You may think she's just SpongeBob's boating teacher, but you'd be very, very wrong. For years, she's been running from her dark and mysterious past, but it's finally caught up to her. And behind it all is a mastermind who's been secretly controlling her life and psychologically torturing her. If you guys thought my last two what? theories were mind-blowing, get ready for my biggest conspiracy yet. This is the Mrs. Puff Theory. Are you serious? You saying somebody has been secretly controlling Mrs. Puff? I, I got to see this. I I have to see this episode, bro. I gotta this start gotta off by good. saying, wow, the reaction I to my say. last two SpongeBob theories has been insane. Have to say no! Have to say no! Squilliam, you lying, deceiving. Who is that handsome young devil? I'm going. No, boy. I'm gonna get back on your shit, boy. No, no, no. Bring that ass back here, boy. Ah, I'm gonna attack it. I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna. Nom, 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 nom. Looking ass. No, boy. You look like motherfucking McLovin, stupid ass. I'm gonna get on your shit. You look like McLovin. Fuck around. Got on Twitch. I'm gonna get on your shit, boy. Uh, this nigga looks like that nigga that sang Chocolate Rain. Nasty ass, boy. I'm gonna get on your shit, boy. The fat ass cop glasses, boy. That boy got the. Glasses on that Carmen wore when he was a uh, police officer, boy. I'm gonna get your shit. And deceiving. Who is that handsome young? No, boy. You look like a uh, banana. Okay, Devil. all right. I'm glad you guys are enjoying my ridiculously deep dives into this show. I mean, I have to watch so much SpongeBob and read so much of the Wikipedia to put these theories together, but it's worth it because the writers actually take the time to set. <laughs> Hold on, bro. They said, bro, they said he look like a broke ass Steve Harvey, boy. <laughs> these things up. Now, a lot of people Shout have been out asking, to him, man. Oh, just how do you come up with these crazy conspiracy theories? Well, I always start these theories by looking for the moments in the show that seem to be implying more than they're letting on. Like I've said before, SpongeBob is a weird show with lots of abstract humor, but I can usually understand the intent the writers had behind a weird joke. But then there's stuff like this. I hope I still remember how to do this. What? <laughs> yeah. And it's so girl, you're making a condom. What? Confusing and weird that it feels like the writers are trying to imply something beyond just weirdness for the sake of comedy. And nowhere in the show is there more of these moments than with Mrs. Puff. And once I started looking into it, it led me down the deepest rabbit hole I've ever seen from this show. So, let's begin. All right. Uh oh. Looks like I'm getting hacked by. Oh no. This is gonna be. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There we go. Let's jump here. Mrs. Puff, dark past. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher in Bikini Bottom. She's passed all of her students except for one, SpongeBob SquarePants. He's taken her driver's test hundreds of times and he always ends up failing it and causing destruction and chaos that usually ends up with Damn. Mrs. Puff going to jail, despite it not really being her fault. We also know that she was once married, but her husband was killed by fishermen. That's my driving teacher, uh, Mrs. Puff. Mrs. Puff? Oh, she's married. Oh no, Mr. Krabs, she's single. Then what happened to Mr. Puff? Oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. She doesn't like to talk about it. Throughout the show, there are moments like this that seem to be hinting at her having a dark, mysterious past. And in Season 2, Episode 10, No Free Rides, we get the biggest clue about who Mrs. Puff really is. After SpongeBob fails the driving test yet again, Mrs. Puff has just had it with him and ends up just giving up and giving him his license even though he never really passed. She quickly realizes he that this is a it. horrible idea and he'll probably end up destroying the entire town. <laughs> Oh, so damn. much 
question. This reporter asks, why? Local consensus places the blame on this <laughs> negligent, <laughs> selfish driving instructor. Who Remember this clip, because it's going to be very important Boy. later on. And then she says this insanely revealing line. What have I done? <laughs> Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. I'll have to move to a new city, start a new boating school with a new name. No. Not again. No. What? Not again. Come on, it's like they're just begging someone to make a theory about this. So we now know Mrs. Puff was originally from a different town, she used to own a different boating school, and Mrs. Puff isn't even her real name. There's something in her past that she ran away from. Now, there's been some debate over whether she's actually referring to a new name for herself or for her boating school, but I do think she's talking about her own name. Because if she's trying to run away from something in her past, she wouldn't start a new boating school with her real name in the title. Right. Now, when she says again, I don't think she's just referring to starting a new life. Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. Not again. <laughs> I think at her previous boating school, she had a terrible student just like Spongebob, who she prematurely gave a license to, and it led to something so terrible happening that she had to run away and start a whole new life. Man, because In look, season the biggest thing is she did, she did, like, she had such a, a vivid vision. But what if it wasn't a vision, it was a flashback just with Spongebob inserted in there as the as, as her previous student. See, that's, that's a, my boy Alex, you done done it again. Three episode five, doing time, we get a flashback to when she first opened up the school. Ah! Where did I go wrong? Oh, me. With the opening of my new boating school, I pledge that as long as a student is willing to learn, I shall never give up. Hi, I'm SpongeBob SquarePants. With the opening of this new boating school, let's keep in mind that this is not her first boating school. Right. Maybe the whole reason she's making this pledge now at her second school is because she gave up on a student at her previous school, and that right. led to her having to run away and start a new life. She's pledging to never make the same mistake again. Now let's skip ahead to one of the newer episodes. Season 12, episode 21, Lighthouse Louie, where Mrs. Puff has Spongebob organize all the stuff she keeps in the school's lighthouse. There's lots of interesting things hidden in the background, but the first thing that caught my eye was this file labeled Mrs. Puff. It makes sense for a teacher to have files on all their students, but why would she have a file about herself? But let's remember, she's not Mrs. Puff. That's a fake identity she created. And I'm willing to bet all of her fake identification documents are in this file. Back in No Free Rides, she just gives Spongebob a license that she already had for him. So she clearly makes these licenses and would probably know how to make fake identifications. But that's not the only hint about Mrs. Puff's past in this lighthouse. There is something in here that directly confirms all of this. As Spongebob swallows all of Mrs. Puff's junk, we see something very interesting for only a few frames. Deranged boat teacher makes getaway. Damn! How do you even? Uh, one quick second, just just one second. Boy, get your bad teeth having ass, boy. Get your doodle pop teeth having ass, boy. Get your. I haven't seen a dentist in four years, stupid ass boy. I'm gonna get her your shit, boy. Them motherfucking wrinkles in the back of your mouth looks like uh, sun rays coming down to heat up them hot ass teeth. Them teeth hot as hell, boy. Ten seasons later, and the creators are still hiding stuff about Mrs. Puff fleeing her old life. It might not look like it at first, but we actually get a ton of new information from this newspaper. This is from the New Kelp Post, which tells us Mrs. Puff originally lived in New Kelp City. Then there's right. a caption that reads, Distracts authorities with balloon animals. And do you remember that clip from the beginning? I hope I still remember how to do this. Wow. Yeah. So whenever Mrs. Puff makes a getaway or commits a crime, she leaves behind a balloon animal to distract the police. I'm telling you guys, these what? writers don't just do stuff randomly, they have reasons for everything. And the right. most damning piece of evidence from this newspaper is actually the picture of Mrs. Puff. Kind of a strange photo, right? <laughs> we have seen this exact same photo of her before. In the episode No Free Rides, when she imagines what would happen if Spongebob got his license. Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor. This means right. that this isn't just her- I told y'all, I told y'all it probably was a flashback. That she, her last fucking, her, bro, her last student literally caused so much destruction, the town is on fire. 
under the water, on fire under the water. Her imagination of what might happen. This is also her remembering what happened when she lived in New Kelp City and prematurely gave one of her students a license. And I'm willing to bet that the fish reporting the news is the exact same one who reported about her in New Kelp City. Let me explain. We know from the episode Whatever Happened to Spongebob that reporters from the Bikini Bottom News can also work for the New Kelp City News. But the real reason I think this is because of his hair. In the entire show, we have never seen this fish reporter with hair before. Why would the creators go out of their way to add that detail? Because Mrs. Puff isn't imagining him as he looks now. She's remembering him from years ago when he used to have hair when he reported about her in New Kelp City. Mrs. Puff has been running from her past ever since and is now forced to relive her experience with an unteachable student through Spongebob. Bob. But reliving this trauma has pushed her to the point of complete insanity. And trust me when I say that you have no idea how delusional she actually is. The insanity of Mrs. Puff. This is getting crazy. Another but running good. gag throughout the series is Mrs. Puff's occasional nervous breakdowns or moments of insanity because of SpongeBob, and they get more severe as the show continues. At first, she did care for SpongeBob, but in the newer episodes, she literally tries to kill SpongeBob just to get him out of her life. Damn. Even SpongeBob just walking up to her gives her severe PTSD. Hi, Mrs. Puff. <laughs> ah! Hit the brakes, SpongeBob! <laughs> Wait, Mrs. Puff. Driving. But these mostly seem like just one-off <laughs> moments, and for the most part, Mrs. Puff is still a what? functioning member of society, right? I'm going to show you that she's actually much, much more insane and delusional than you may think. And some of the episodes she's in take place entirely in her own head. If we're talking about how insane Mrs. Puff is, what? there is no better place to start this than the episode crazy, being time. Bro. Once again, Spongebob fails the voting test and causes destruction and chaos, which leads to Mrs. Puff going to jail. Spongebob keeps breaking into jail to try and bust her out, but Mrs. Puff actually prefers being in jail over teaching him. We actually get another interesting line about Mrs. Puff's past in this episode. Okay, you can do this, Puff. You can get through this without losing your sanity. Oh, that's a we don't want to go down again. So we know that Mrs. Puff again. has lost her sanity in the past, probably from her previous terrible students. But it seems like she's recovered since then, except in this episode, she has a complete mental breakdown. SpongeBob keeps appearing in impossible places until she gets thrown into solitary confinement, where each wall of the room transforms into a giant SpongeBob face. Hey, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I I know that I know this one thing when I when I was locked up, bro. I, I can tell y'all one thing, bro. You, for some reason, you kind of feel like the walls are closing in on you, bro. I'm not even lying. Like, even, no matter where you go, even if somebody just puts you in a room, if you just be in a fucking room and just, like, you, like, if you go in a room and somebody has the key and they can, and you can't get out the room, you will start developing some really weird psychological things, bro. And I'm not even lying. Like, starting to think about, like, different shit that just could happen. It's like, oh, my God, what happened if this place is on fire? How the fuck would I get out? You just start. It's the craziest shit. So, like, her going crazy, thinking about SpongeBob already just, like, driving her crazy. That That's not uncommon, my boy. And it's I didn't know that this she was this deranged, my boy. And then the episode ends in a way that's so weird and confusing that it rivals the infamous gorilla episode ending. As Mrs. Puff freaks out, she's suddenly transported back into the beginning of the episode when SpongeBob was taking the test. Except this time, SpongeBob gets arrested instead of her. Help! Help! No! This is not a good time! No! I can't believe it! It was all a dream! I'm not going to jail! Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. <laughs> so what's really going on in this episode? Was the ending all in her head? Is Mrs. Puff just caught in an endless loop? I think this entire episode is inside of Mrs. Puff's head, and she's actually on the outside the whole time, but she's been imagining herself inside of prison. I can explain. What? Listen closely to what the police officer tells Mrs. Puff. I'm not going to jail! Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. And then revealing- Right, her biscuit lip ass. Look like two biscuits put together and shit. Slapped on the top, boy, with a little bit of uh, salami in the middle. Fuck she's still in a prison uniform despite being on the outside. So this scene is obviously inside of her head, which means everything we see is symbolic. And if we can understand the symbolism of it, we can understand what's really going on with Mrs. Puff. 
Notice how she's suddenly wearing a black and white striped prison uniform, even though the entire episode she's been wearing this orange jumpsuit. Why would the creators go to the extra effort to draw a whole new prison uniform for her? Well, we've seen her wear this black and white prison uniform before, the very What's first up, time she went to prison back in Season 1, Episode 7, Hall Monitor. So when the police officer says, you've already done your time, he's referring to the first time she went to jail. But why is she still wearing that uniform outside of prison? Well, she may have gotten out of jail, but she was by no means free. Having to teach Spongebob is a prison in itself, and she manifests that by believing she's in jail and wearing a prison uniform despite being on the outside. This entire episode, every time Spongebob magically appears, is all inside of her head. She is wow. completely delusional, and hints that she's experiencing these hallucinations don't stop there. Just six episodes later, she goes to a house party Spongebob throws, and while everyone is talking and having a good time, in the background we see she's literally sitting by herself talking to an ice sculpture of Spongebob. You can't tell Tell me this isn't intentional, I mean look at this. What? Now back in the episode No Free Rides, there is a very strange picture inside of Mrs. Puff's home. It's a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff creating an infinite loop. This is something that has confused Spongebob fans for years. But like everything in the show, there is a reason for it being there. One of the Spongebob storyboard artists actually called it the biggest mystery in the entire show. If you think about it, this is just like the end of Doing Time, where she's stuck in an infinite loop of Spongebob failing the driving test. Because it's all symbolic of what her life is, just an endless cycle of Spongebob taking the test and failing, and no matter what she does to try and escape, she always ends up back in the same place at the end of the episode. So this picture is another symbolic manifestation of what she's feeling. We even see another one of these pictures all the way in Season 9, Episode 5, wow. Bumper to Maybe, maybe it's like, that's crazy. Like, maybe it's giving her the endless loop. Like, think about this, it's giving her the endless loop because she can't, not even it's like i don't i don't know i was gonna say kind of like 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 on the episode of futurama where he he was doing like a flashback you know what i'm saying fry was doing a flashback where he uh could go to his family talk to his family touch and see his family but as soon as he stepped outside it was like white and you know what i'm saying and, or as soon as he was doing something else, it was like white and it and it like almost like it didn't load in, like a game that didn't load in. And he's like, What why the fuck is this like that? He said, Well, because you in that time you never actually went outside. You just you don't really know like your your mind, the machine, your brain, everything. It doesn't fucking know what's going on out there. It just you know what I'm saying? Like it knows what's going on here. Like you were in here. Like the best the biggest thing that you could do is look out the window possibly. But it's just like, okay, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent. What I mean here, what I mean is, is it could be the infinite loop, the infinite loop just symbolizing, like, you know, it's like she's looking at herself and it just keeps on going, it keeps on going, and it could symbolize that it's happening over and over and over. I don't know, man. This is crazy, bro. This is, it is trippy. This is trippy. This is crazy, man. But I'm, I'm really liking it, though. I'm really liking it. She, she's out of her damn mind, man. This is something that the show is consistently alluding to. Mrs. Puff is an unreliable narrator, and anything we see with her could potentially all be inside of her own head. In fact, I believe I found another episode that takes place inside of her head. In Season 9, Episode 17, Spongebob Long Pants, Spongebob goes to a different boating instructor and actually gets his license. But as soon as he does, we briefly cut to Mrs. Puff waking up. You pass. I finally got my driver's license. Oh, oh. Lock your doors. Buy your windows. It's the <laughs> end of the world. Now, this seems like it's probably just a throwaway gag where Mrs. Puff somehow senses that SpongeBob got his license and it causes her to wake up and freak out. You know, it's a good bit. It's funny. But I have a question. If the joke is that she's supposed to be waking up at the exact time Spongebob gets his license, how come she wakes up at night when Spongebob clearly gets his license during the day? Because right. this entire episode actually takes place inside of Mrs. Puff's head. And this is the only part of the episode in the real world. Damn. Damn! I don't know what that was all about, but... 
I'm glad it's over. But let me pause for a second. I'm sure some of you are already wondering if this contradicts my previous Spongebob video, The Television Theory. If you ever watched that one, the gist of it is that the entire show is a documentary television show, and everything we see is actually being secretly filmed by scuba divers. And there's a ton of evidence to support it. I'm very proud of that video. You should definitely check it out. But if everything's supposed to be from a camera, then how are we seeing things from inside Mrs. Puff's head? In fact, how do we see dreams and flashbacks and thought bubbles? Well, I think the simple answer is that even though we view the show through an objective camera lens, the world itself still follows the rules of a cartoon. You can never tell another living soul. Wait, wait, hold on! What's that? My pen is out of ink. <laughs> Plankton! You'll never get me formula. Not even in a flashback. In the world of SpongeBob, you- Hey, that's what I love when- I love when characters break the fourth wall. That- that shit was hilarious, bro. That- that shit was funny as fuck, man. Imagine something and other people could still see, record, or interact with it because that's just how cartoons work. Back to the theory, we know that her insanity has caused her to live a life of delusion, but if you remember back to the Lighthouse episode, she's also become an extreme hoarder, and looking at her collection of junk is like a look directly into her mind, so there's gotta be something we can learn about her from it. There's a picture of her boyfriend, Mr. Krabs, uh -huh. the home monitor belt she gives her students, the mean drawings her students make her, Spongebob's diary, a boating safety helmet- Wait, Spongebob's diary? Mm. Why does she have Spongebob's diary? The last right. time we saw that, it was safely put away in Spongebob's library. What's it doing in her lighthouse? Right. And why does she have Squidward's painting? And a table from the Krusty Krab? And Spongebob's bike? And Squidward's teddy bear? And the hair curlers Mr. Krabs had? And that statue of Squidward? And that diamond ring? And that crown? And that bucket of radioactive waste? And that jellyfish sign? Oh. My. God. Mrs. Puff is a kleptomaniac. Mrs. Oh, Puff wow. has been stealing from everyone in Bikini Bottom. I can even prove that her pet snail from Season 3, Episode 19 was stolen. My snail is up a tree. I've had her since I was a little girl. No! Hmm. Catch you've her had that snail ass. since you've been a little girl, huh? Then how come that is the exact same snail Squidward had four episodes ago in the Great Snail Race? I wouldn't let Snally here play with that mongrel mutt. She's a purebred. See, she even has her own papers. He even has her paperwork. Mrs. Damn. Puff clearly stole the snail from Squidward. But why the hell would Mrs. Puff steal all this other junk? What possible use could she have for any of it? We could find the answer to that question by looking at this green hat and this purple jacket. These were gifts Mr. Krabs bought her on their first date, but she ended up feeling uncomfortable receiving them and gave them back to him. I'm afraid I just don't feel comfortable accepting all these gifts. Except apparently she's uh, not too uncomfortable to steal them back afterwards. So clearly Mrs. Pub isn't stealing this. Well, I mean, he could have, he could have just gave it back to her and been like, well, I mean, it's either you wear them or I take them back to the store. Or I want you to have them kind of thing. You know, it's not uncommon for women to be like, Ah, no, I want to look good, though. I may not have something nothing else, but I want to look good, though. Stuff because she wants to use it. She just steals for the thrill of it. Maybe stealing things is her way of coping with the insanity of her everyday life. And remember, this isn't the first time she's gone insane. You can get through this without losing your sanity. Oh, that's a road we don't want to go down again. In fact, I have reason to believe that she started stealing things way <laughs> back whenever she first went insane. I hope I still remember. My boy said Mr. Krabs would never beg to give it back. No, that's facts. But we never seen how Mr. Krabs act towards a woman. Cause we know that he got a, he know that he got a baby mama, right? We know Mr. Krabs got a baby mama because he was dating a whale. You know what I'm saying? It's a, a big big old whale. So we know that. We know Mr. Krabs like BBWs, alright? Mrs. Puff. You know what I'm saying? She got a dog. But we never actually seen Mr. Krabs interact with a woman. Now, we never seen him really interact with a woman. And then, if he bought all those gifts, and you know how Mr. Krabs like to save money. If he bought all those gifts, then my boy is going to, he wants her to have it. He definitely wants her to have it. Mr. Krabs is, he, Mr. Krabs is a simp. He's the type to buy a woman a whole bunch of shit in exchange for a date. My fucking like, boy, not even for no puh. A date. No, no puh. A date. For how to do this. I don't think she's just talking about remembering how to make balloon animals. She's probably also referring to remembering how to steal a boat. And if that's not enough for you, in a Spongebob comic book, she actually admits that she used to rob banks and she wears the exact same ski mask. 
Mrs. Puff lives a completely delusional and miserable serious? life, all because she has to teach SpongeBob how to drive. It's led her to steal from the people she cares about and completely disassociate from reality. But that begs a very important question. If SpongeBob is causing her life to be so miserable, then why does she even keep teaching him? After all the destruction and pain he's caused, she'd totally be justified to expel him. Right? I mean, she will literally try and kill him so she doesn't have to teach him, but for some reason she can't just expel him. It's almost like there's someone forcing her to teach Spongebob. This couch was originally $400. I got it for $320 using the Honey Shopping. Yeah, Plankton trying to do that shit. Remember, Plankton did try to control everybody's minds in that Spongebob movie. I don't know, my boy. To the episode No Free Rides, after prematurely giving Spongebob a license, she steals his boatmobile so he can't hurt anyone. In the end, this causes her to get arrested and go to jail, but then Spongebob tells her this. And besides, the warden says she'll let you go early, if you do her a favor. What's that? Free driving lessons! She'll get to leave prison early if she gives free driving lessons. That seems like an oddly specific what? requirement. And that's not the only time this gets mentioned either. In Season 9, Episode 5, Bumper to Bumper, we get this scene. If only Spongebob could pass his boating test, he'd be out of my life once and for all. Unfortunately, I keep getting reminded of the consequences if I get too angry with the little nuisance. Consequences? Damn. Are you telling me that if she refuses to teach Spongebob specifically, she'll be violating her parole and get sent back to jail? Why does the prison even care if Mrs. Puff teaches Spongebob? Is it just part of some weird community service? But things start to get really- Nah, cause they don't want that nigga out on the streets, boy, driving and shit. Suspicious at the end of season seven, episode five, Summer Job. Once again, Mrs. Puff ends up in jail, but this time she's forced to go to a prison boating school. Oh, wow! A driver's education class! Good day, class! <laughs> ah! I must be having a nightmare! What's he doing here? <laughs> Dear Mrs. Pop, I'm following in your footsteps and got a job as a driver's ed teacher for the summer. Yeah! What? Who in their right mind would hire Spongebob to do this after he's literally destroyed the city countless Thanks. times while driving? Is this just another one of Mrs. Puff's delusions? Or is the prison intentionally forcing her to be around Spongebob just to torture her? I mean, look at the way the guard forces her to sit there and listen to him. Get me out of here! Oh, 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 ow! Oh, ow! Ah, oh! And look at that evil smile he has as he watches her endure this torture. There is something very strange going on with this prison. Then, in Season 10, Episode 8, The Getaway, Mrs. Puff meets a criminal named Dorsal Dan and starts to get romantic feelings for him. This is also while she's still dating Mr. Krabs. Shame on you, Mrs. Puff. Right. At the end of the episode, they both accidentally land in prison, and the warden puts him in solitary confinement. Warden, I found this one pulling up outside the prison. Dorsal Dan, a notorious getaway driver. Toss him in the clink. <laughs> Toss that boy I in the clank. You, my little tender boy. <laughs> in or out of jail, this prison will stop at nothing to make sure she is alone and miserable. But why? Who's behind all of this? Why would anyone care this much about torturing Mrs. Puff? Who's the mastermind pulling the strings? Thanks. Well, maybe it has something to do with her old life in New Kelp City. Maybe she Thanks. crossed someone and they've been plotting their revenge ever since. But I've oh, looked in every shit. single frame of New Kelp City. Bro, hold on, hold on, hold on. Could could it actually be could it actually be the uh the old student? Could it be the old student? I don't know, bro. That's that, that's what I'm landing on here. I don't know. I don't I don't know, but we got to see though. Help City, and there is nothing connecting it back to the prison. Maybe except for the literal warden of the prison she's being kept in. He may be hiding slightly off screen, but that is clearly the same warden of the Bikini Bottom prison. And this isn't some random background character that the show reuses all the time, he is a very distinct character. You can call me out on the Squilliam video all you want, but not this time. But wait a second, wait a second. If the warden was originally from New Kelp City, then he'd probably know about Mrs. Puff's dark past and her true identity. So, why hasn't he exposed her? He's just kept quiet about the fact that one of his inmates is living a completely false identity. She'd probably even get more prison time when they find out who she really is, so why hasn't he said anything? This is where things get very interesting. So, 
We know Mrs. Puff prematurely gave a student at her original boating school a license, and that led to them causing chaos and destruction. Maybe this student accidentally did something terrible to the warden, and he's blamed Mrs. Puff ever since. Whatever happened was so terrible that it caused him to move to Bikini Bottom and get a job as the warden of the town's prison. And to his surprise, he finds out that one of his inmates is actually the person he blamed for that terrible thing happening. This works out perfectly for him. He can finally get his revenge on Mrs. Puff by making her life miserable. All he has to do is reveal her dark secret and she'll be stuck in jail for much longer. Except for one small issue with his plan. Mrs. Puff actually likes being in prison. One day down, 2,528 to go. Oh, that's just shy of four years without SpongeBob. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. Damn. So he comes up with a new plan. Keep Mrs. Puff's secret and let her out of prison early, but only under the condition that she has to teach SpongeBob. He's literally turning her normal life into a prison. And he makes sure going back to prison to avoid SpongeBob isn't even an option for her anymore, because he'll make sure that SpongeBob is always in there with her. And Damn. he's not gonna let her escape and start a new life like- Cause I was thinking to myself like, but who the fuck would give this man a job teaching if he does, one, he's not a teacher. Two, this nigga flipped patties at the Krusty Krabs. Three, you don't have a driver's license, so how the fuck do you qualify? So now he just answered it. I don't know, my boys, this is all adding up, my boy. He did in New Kelp City. He makes sure to give her an ankle bracelet that doesn't let her leave Bikini Bottom. I can't even leave town without violating my parole. He is the mastermind <laughs> who's been controlling everything this entire time. But guess what? His insidious plan doesn't even end there. This is not the first time we've seen the Warden character. We first see him in Season 4, Episode 2, Crabs vs. Plankton. In this episode, Plankton slips on some water in the Krusty Krab and decides to sue Mr. Krabs for every he owns. And then guess who shows up out of nowhere and offers to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer? What I really need is a good lawyer. What? Hello, did somebody say lawyer? Richard A. Bottom Feeder, attorney at law. <laughs> I couldn't help but Bottom notice feeder. that despicable display. Richard A. Bottom Feeder, the warden of the Bikini Bottom prison, is also apparently a lawyer? That's kind of strange. Those both sound like major careers. You usually wouldn't imagine someone being both. Then he right. says he'll be Mr. Krabs' lawyer completely free of charge. So, uh, how much? Is this gonna cost me? Actually, I won't charge a dime unless we win. Well, that's awfully generous of you, Richard. He seems very confident that he can win the case, but right before he goes to court, he slips on some water and says SpongeBob will have to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer now. Oh, this is gonna be a slam. <laughs> oh no! Mr. Krabs' lawyer, speak to me! Wrapped with pain, can't move. Looks like you're gonna have to handle this one, son. <laughs> he tells what? SpongeBob that he has to represent Mr. Krabs, even though he himself called SpongeBob a liability. Actually, SpongeBob, we won't be needing any testimony from you. Why, you'd be more of a, uh... <laughs> of a liability than an asset. But it's okay, because apparently all SpongeBob needs to win is inside of Richard's briefcase. Everything you need to win <laughs> is in this here case. <laughs> really? Damn. Except when SpongeBob gets the- That boy got the Hitler cut on the top, boy. They, they, they literally got the Hitler. Court, he realizes that Richard never gave him the combination to the case. It's uh, all in here. Really? Yep, right in here. Is there a problem? Uh, your lawyer didn't give me the combination. Either Richard A. Bottom Theater is the worst lawyer in history, or this is all part of his elaborate plan to ruin Mrs. Puff's life. Here's what I think happened. First, he finds out that Mr. Krabs is being sued, and he wants to ensure that Mr. Krabs loses the case because he wants to destroy any chance Mrs. Puff has at finding love. So he pretends to be a lawyer, even offering his services for free, something Mr. Krabs can't resist. He makes Mr. Krabs feel confident that they're gonna win the case, and then at the last second, he pretends to get into an accident so he can't represent Mr. Krabs. Instead of finding a real lawyer to replace him, he tells the most incompetent person for the job, SpongeBob, that he has to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer and he gives him a case that allegedly has all the answers in it without actually giving Spongebob the combination, setting him up for a total failure in court. Richard A. Bottom Feeder refuses to let anyone get close to Mrs. Puff. Not Dorsal Dan, and not Mr. Krabs. This guy has squillium levels of hate for Mrs. Puff, Thanks. but why? What exactly did her previous student do that warrants this much torture? This is getting really good, bro. I ain't even gonna fake it. This is really, really good, bro. This... This is really, really good, really, really well put together, bro. 
Her shit it still do look like biscuits, though. I ain't even gonna lie. Something as simple as him or his property getting damaged. It has to be something life-changing. Something like losing a loved one because of the student's reckless driving. And I think the show gives us one last hint about who this might have been. All the pictures of Mrs. Puff's house are very meaningful to her. She's got photos of Mr. Krabs, her pet snail, and of course those infinitely looping photos that told us so much about her mental state. But there is one more photo in this house that might be the key to this entire conspiracy. In season 12, episode 14, Plankton's Old Chum, we see a photo of someone we've never seen before on Mrs. Puff's wall. There's some surprising similarities between this character and Richard. The green color, the red bow tie, the overall fancy, serious appearance. It clearly is the same person, but maybe this is someone related to Richard. Like a father, a son, or a brother that Mrs. Puff's former student killed. And the Damn. reason she keeps a photo of him up is to have a permanent reminder to never make the same mistake of giving someone a license who doesn't deserve it. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher who once made a terrible mistake that led to the loss of her business, identity, sanity, and any chance at finding happiness. Damn. I like to think that there used to be a time when she was happy, back when her husband was still alive. If only he was still around today, maybe she wouldn't have to face all of this on her own. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. This is not it. what I would say if I was done, except her husband is still alive! Woo! What? Let's do this! In the Spongebob movie, Spongebob and Patrick travel to a gift shop named Shell City that's full of dead fish turned into knickknacks and ornaments. Except they end up setting oh, off the smoke wow. detector, which activates the sprinkler system and brings all the dead fish back to life, including a very familiar looking puffer fish hanging from the ceiling. Mr. Puff is alive. Well, well that nigga was a light in that other episode, boy, this nigga probably, it's gonna be a glowfish now. Wait a second, if he's alive and he escaped, then... Why hasn't he gone back to Mrs. Puff? Why is she still alone? Because remember, she ran away from their home in New Kelp City and started a new identity. So sadly, Mr. Puff has no way of finding her. The tragedy of Mrs. Puff's story is that her happiness is just a city away, but she can never even leave town because that would violate her parole. Richard A. Bottomfeeder probably even knows her husband is alive and is making sure they're never reunited. As the wow. name says, Richard really is a bottom feeder. He ass! This video took a ton of time and effort to do all the research for, so I really hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching, and thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring. Man, shout out to my boy Alex for that. That was, that was an incredible story, but move. Damn, foot got caught in the cord. Man, look, that was an incredible story. I'm not even gonna lie, bro. And that's why I'm so glad, I'm so happy that y'all have gave me the, 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 the idea to do SpongeBob conspiracies over on the channel, bro. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Shout out to my boy Alex. Shout out to everybody on the team because it's a, I know he. I don't know if he did this by himself, but he did this by himself. Man, this man is a fucking genius. I knocked over my fucking water cucumber, but this man is a genius, bro. This man is a straight genius, man. So big shout out to Alex, man.